Cervelle Incorporated was brought to Evansville, Indiana through a series of technological advances and business dealings over a period of three decades. The Bright and Buggy Company, originally located in Cincinnati, Ohio, moved to Evansville under the direction of Colonel William McCurdy. During the move, the name of the company was changed to the Hercules Buggy Works. This corporation initially manufactured buggies and wagons and later added automobiles and truck bodies as the industry developed. As Hercules continued to supply Evansville with jobs and a marketable product, they began producing condensing units for the Siebert Johnson Corporation, which marked the beginning of the refrigeration industry in Evansville. The slogan of Siebert Johnson was Serve Electrically, which was shortened to Cervell Sales Company as business began to soar. Cervell's main competition was Frigidaire. Consequently, there was pressure to improve the Cervell product. The new refrigerators had many flaws, which included a noisy motor and compressor and a high service cost from excessive breakdowns. Balzar von Platten and Karl Munters, two young Swedish men, worked for a company named the Electrolux Corporation. Little did they know, Munters and von Platten had solved a problem that had been challenging Cervell for a long time. These scientists had designed a new refrigerator that could operate on gas, kerosene, electricity, or any other fuel source that would provide heat. This principle, called gas absorption technology, could silently produce ice from heat. Back in Evansville, Colonel McCurdy's health was failing, and in June of 1925, he announced the sale of the Hercules Corporation to the Cervell Corporation. As need for the Electrolux refrigerator became obvious, Cervell bought the patent rights for the Electrolux development. Cervell was uh, very instrumental. You know, not only did they make a fabulous product, but they did a lot of innovative types of things. Their big uh, forte in the refrigerator business was the gas absorption refrigerator. It had uh, always promoted as being the silent refrigerator. It operated with, uh, with no moving parts, uh, and basically it operated through the gas absorption technology, uh, which uh, utilized ammonia and water in terms of a, uh, a process to uh, make ice, what they say, make ice from heat. Although Cervell had acquired the rights to produce the gas refrigerator, it took them over a year to begin production. When the products hit the market, sales boomed as consumers scrambled to buy these new refrigerators. However, some people became skeptical of their refrigerators since they used heat to produce cold, which they thought was an elaborate magic trick. Another issue was that in many areas of the country, natural gas was not readily available, rendering the gas-powered refrigerators useless. Cervell's engineers worked tirelessly to improve the efficiency of their products and to reach new markets. Improvements were difficult to make, forcing the refrigerators to remain at a higher price than a mechanical refrigerator. On the other hand, maintenance costs were low, which proved attractive to enough buyers that Cervell continued to be Evansville's leading industry with nearly 7,000 workers. Even with this level of success, Cervell felt that the time was right for change and hired Louis Ruthenberg as its president in 1934. And then in uh, 1933, Cervell approached the, uh, him about becoming president of, of Cervell. At the time, they had their main headquarters out of Newburgh, or New York, excuse me, uh, with a manufacturing, major manufacturing plant here in Evansville. So in 1934, uh, Lewis uh, became president of Cervell. Ruthenberg soon became a needed influence in Evansville, due in part to his views on the depression that gripped the nation. He felt that business should continue as if the economy was normal and did not lower prices on his products, and even gave his workers a 10% pay raise. Even with local competition, Cervell continued to be the largest employer in the city. Uh, Cervell certainly had a major impact in the, uh, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, in the 40s, they employed uh, over 12,000 people, so they were certainly a significant employer in town. And through, you know, certainly their wages and benefits and that uh, assisted in, in development, developing a a strong economy for the Evansville area. During Ruthenberg's presidency, Cervell flourished. Sales continually increased and employees displayed a true sense of community within the workplace. Employees participated in activities together outside of work, such as sports teams, plays, and picnics. And the gal that worked there during that time, she, uh, uh, they had a bowling team and she asked me to bowl on the team, so I've been bowling all those years from then. I can't remember the it's somewhere from 52 to 57, but I can't remember. It wasn't right away, I know, that I started bowling with the group. But I'm still bowling, and I'm the only one left. We had uh, 
five team men and five team women. And we bowled against each other, you know, of course. And, and I'm the only one out of the 50 original people that are still bowling in that Wednesday night mixed league. In those days, evolved around uh, the companies that people worked for. And Cervell certainly was, was a major part of that as well in terms of uh, the social networks that were created within the company, the, the sports clubs. Um, uh, so not only were those uh, years of production, you know, great generations of hard work and, and commitment to uh, creating great products, but uh, they were also tied in with a social network amongst, uh, amongst you know, not only Cervell, but other companies in the area. Uh, and created kind of the quality of, of life in, uh, in, in this area. Rutherberg also proved to be an interesting political figure in Evansville. He opposed Roosevelt's New Deal plan as a method of easing the Depression, which prompted him to institute pay raises rather than lay off employees. He referred to this theory as welfare capitalism and encouraged other business leaders in Evansville to follow his lead rather than rely on federal initiatives. As World War II broke out, Cervell stopped its production of domestic goods and began manufacturing only wartime supplies. They built airplane wings to supply Republic aviation as they built their famed Thunderbolts, as well as field stoves, anti-tank mines, landmines, and cartridge casings for the duration of the war. Uh, Cervell was uh, instrumental in, the, in this area, actually, and recognized nationally for their uh, very quick response to the war effort. They converted uh, uh, all of their manufacturing uh, facilities to, to wartime production and, and made just a, a mass of, of various products that were instrumental uh, in the war from assisting with P-47 wings to shell casings to lanterns and, and field stoves which, uh, which were uh, put into uh, uh, use on the front lines in the war effort. Uh, after the war, uh, they converted back uh, to domestic production of refrigeration within 63 days, which is pretty phenomenal when you think of uh, uh, such a large manufacturing operation converting back to uh, a domestic uh, production line in, in such a short period of time. Even during this period of warfare, Ruthenberg looked to the future. He envisioned an all-year air conditioner that could provide heat during the winter as well as cool air throughout the summertime. During the war, Ruthenberg saved the company's profits from its production and used this money to improve the efficiency of the plant after the war ended. Ruthenberg prepared for retirement after the war was over. Upon his retirement, the board announced that the company would be headed by W. Paul Jones. Jones was a sales-oriented leader who oversaw the production of an ice maker and a miniature refrigerator. Some of the major innovations, or one of the major innovations in the late 40s, uh, was the uh, invention of the ice maker. And that was uh, Cervell's introduction uh, uh, in making the automatic ice maker, which actually came out in 1950. And uh, as we know today, uh, the ice maker, the automatic ice maker, is it's just kind of assume that the uh, little ice maker in the door and all those high-tech efficiencies today are going to be there but in the 50s uh, you know with the invention of the automatic ice maker uh, that was really uh, really a major uh, major accomplishment. However the company lost money because of a new costly advertising program. The equipment in the factories also proved to be obsolete costing the company money as well as efficiency. Jones attempted to revitalize the company with the help of Duncan Cameron Menzies. The company was able to clear its credit allowance as well as pay off its loans, but was unable to stay afloat. Eventually, Cervell had to be sold. Whirlpool purchased the rights to the electric refrigerator and the automatic ice maker, and eventually perfected the products. The most successful and most profitable division of the company, the air conditioning division, was sold to Arcoli Air Conditioning. Cervell's former dominance at Evansville was soon eclipsed by Whirlpool, who continued to produce home appliances. Even after the dissolution of Cervell, the memory of the company has lived on in Evansville history. Cervell improved the living standards of its workers and provided good paying jobs for Evansville. While the prominence of the refrigeration industry has given way to the plastics industry in Evansville, its legacy lives on and is best described in the words of Lewis Ruthenberg himself. Our greatest opportunities for advancing productivity and improving living standards are to be found in the field of human relationships.